How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. So this job is going to take a bit of thinking about and there'll be a few, few things I need to make before I can start the job I think but it should be an interesting one. So this is a packer roller off a Sumo Trio cultivator. The problem it's got is that the stub shafts have worn down. This one is a good one but it's still worn and then this other end see how tapered that is. You can see when I put a bearing on just how worn it is. So that's the proper size bearing for that shaft and that's how worn it is. Now this side is not as bad but it still needs sorting out. So I've done one of these before you may have seen a video on another type of packer but the last one I did had a hole in the middle, so I had something to go off to line up on. This has got nothing, it's just a shaft in the middle. I don't want to chop the shaft off because I don't know how it's fastened in or anything and that'll end up being a huge job. So what I'm going to do is try and machine this shaft down in situ. Now it looks like this collar here is not part of the shaft. It looks like, if you can see very well, it looks like it's just been slid over. So if I can get this collar off and expose that good bit of shaft underneath there, then at least I'll have something true to go off. So what I'll do first is see if I can get this off. So I've got that collar off, you can see that that has exposed a good bit of shaft. I should be able to use that to make something to centralise it, whether I make a clamp or something that goes around that bit. Anyway, we'll, we'll take the other one off at the other end and then we'll decide what we're going to do. Right, so that was easy, I didn't even need to warm that one. I maybe wouldn't have had to warm the other side, but I didn't try without heat. Anyway, that's off. Give that a clean up. So if, if you saw my other video, or if you haven't seen my other video, this is what I made. And this clamps on to the bar that I use for line barring. Then this spins round like that with a tool in that hole to machine like the external of shafts rather than internal like you do when you're line barring. So what I'm thinking is if I make a collar like this, but a bigger diameter with a pinch bolt in it and a slot through it so I can slide that on, pinch that onto that good bit of shaft and then I'll make another one of them at this end that's joined by a lump of tube with a 40 mil hole in it with a pinch bolt. So then that's pinched onto there, that should be true with that. And then I'll have my 40 mil, 40 mil bar coming out here, which in theory should be true and central with this. And then I can put my bearings, my line barring bearings, slide it onto that shaft and then tack me stands on like you do when you're line barring. And then that should all be in line and in the middle. And then I'll mount this onto the shaft and have that spinning around to machine that down. That is my plan anyway, there's nothing else I can really go off because none of this is necessarily true. You can see in some places there's a bigger lip around there than there is in other places. So this end plate is not necessarily true with anything or accurate enough to, to go off. So that's sort of the best and simplest way I can see of doing it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut some 100mm circles out of this bit of 30mm plate. And then I'll be able to join them two bits of them circles together with a bit of tube, something like that. Just an old bit of tube I've got. That's the only thing that I have the right size. So yeah, I'll 
start by cutting them circles out. So I've got them two cut out, I'm not really sure now what's the best way is going to do this so I'm just going to make it up as I go along. This tube I want welded onto there with that one welded on the other end and then this tube, uh, this plate will have a 40mm hole in it and that one will have a 60mm hole in it. So what I'm going to do I think rather than weld them on now what I'll do is I'll put these in the lathe and I'll machine like a, a step onto these that will fit inside that because that's like a seamless tube. So I know that's bang in the middle of that. Do the same with this one. Well, obviously I'll have to cut a bit off this and neaten it up and then weld them both on and then after it's all welded up then I can bore the holes through the middle and then I know that that hole will be dead true to this hole. If I do the holes first and then weld it together there's a chance that the weld might pull it and the risk it might pull it out of square. That's my thinking anyway so yeah I'm going to do it like that. So I've, I've also spoken to someone that used to work at Sumo and apparently these stub shafts they are stub shafts but there's another plate welded about 300 or 400 mil in there with a hole in the middle that this plate this shaft slots into but then this is welded onto this end plate and then on the inside it's got braces in as well so to get this out i'd have to chop the whole of the end of the roller out to remove all this lot to then replace the stub shaft and then weld it all back in so i think i am doing right by trying to machine it down in situ if it goes as as planned. It'd be a lot, lot less work than it would be chopping it all out. So they have cut out real clean of them. I'm just going to give them a clean round on the belt sander to get rid of that stuff because it doesn't always machine very nice. And then there's a bit knobbly bit where it started and stopped that I'll get rid of and then I'll put them in the lathe and do the machining. So I've got that in the lathe. I've used them parallels behind the back of it to get it set out of the jaws. I'll machine half the diameter down. The outside diameter doesn't matter too much but it'll just help if they're both exactly the same. Then when I sit it on the milling machine, it's easier to, to line up and clamp down if both ends are the, are the same. So yeah, I'll turn that down, turn a step onto it, and turn it round, machine the other half of the diameter down, and then do the same on the other one.
So that's that machined up. So that step now will fit inside there like that. I can weld that round. So I'll do exactly the same with the other one. So that's then machined up. I've cleaned that up as well. So now that'll go on there like that. That one will go on the top. We'll weld them round and then put them back in the lathe and ball the holes through the middle.
So that's that welded round now, so I'll have to let it cool down because it's obviously it's hot now.
So I've been through that now with the 40 mil ream at that end and then the 60 mil ream at this end. The reason why I took it out with the boring bar and then did it with the reamer is so I didn't want to drill it and end up knocking it out of true because drills take quite a bit of force sometimes. So I just did it steady away with a boring bar out to 59 and a half mil and then finished it off with the reamer. So now that hole in that end and this hole at this end should be banging line with each other, should be you know, dead on true. So I can take this out now. So in case you haven't quite realised or worked out what I'm doing or understood understood what I'm doing. So this now, we're going to there. I need to make it, I need to drill a hole and make it clamp onto there. But the theory is that'll go onto there like that. And I can put me bar for me line bar in there like that. Tighten that onto there so that's nips onto that. In theory, that should be true with the original shaft. Now whether I put it on rollers and spin it round and true it up with a dial gauge as well or whether that'll be near enough so at the moment it's a little bit wobbly but i'm hoping when i clamp it down onto it it should clamp it tight and straight so what i need to do with this now is put it on the milling machine clamp it down and then drill it and tap it and put a pinch bolt in they'll have to chop it all the way through as well so it'll squeeze up but anyway we'll put it on the mill and drill it and tap it so i can't get much done this morning because we haven't got any electric so the storm that we had last night is taking, must have taken the wires down or a pole down. <clears throat> so the power grid have bought us a generator, but they haven't got it wired up yet. So I don't know whether to, to get our generator going for the corn dryer, bring an extension lead across to my milling machine, or whether just to wait for them to get that one sorted. That's the reason why I've got no electric. Right, so we've got some electric back uh, it's 11 o'clock now so i've lost half a day pretty much but i was already short of time for this week but i can only get done what i can get done so i've got that clamped down onto the milling bed it'll be all right like that what i want to do now is is put one of these cap head bolts through there so i'll have to mill flat for the head of the bolt to go in and then drill it and tap it and then cut it in half afterwards
So the, br the drill was just to say breaking through and it snapped. So I'll have to see if I've got another 8.5mm drill to do the other side. I've got them milled out, so the bolt head I'm sitting there like that, obviously the other way up. And then once I've got them drilled through, I just need to tap them. So that's all the machining done on there. I got managed to get that snap drill bit out. Got them drilled and tapped, and then drilled through bigger, like the top half, for the shank of the bolt. Well, it only wants to be threaded in the bottom half. So what I need to do now is chop it in half. Now to chop it in half, I don't have a proper like slitting wheel for the milling machine. I do have some of these for this is for an old horizontal milling machine but I haven't got a spindle to hold it so rather than spend time making a spindle I think I'll just chop it in half with the grinder so when I turn them down I turn them down to 100 mil so if I just sit a bit of 50 mil box across there and then draw across it like that a sharp bit of chalk that should give me my cut line where I need to chop it in half well, not all the way in half but just down one side trouble is it's sat in the dip so it's going to be a bit lower so i'll have to mark that line a little bit lower than what it is now not that it matters too much
So that's that bit done. The pinch bolts are in there. I've got cut all the way through. So moment of truth now. We'll try it on and see whether it's going to work or not. So that fits on there exactly like I intended it to. It's nipped up onto there, nipped up onto there, that's all solid. So I can, what I'm going to do when I put my bearings on is I'm going to stick my dial gauge to it, see if I can run the dial gauge around the outside of there, just to make sure we are something like true. These don't always wear even, I've noticed on other ones I've done, other like packers, they don't seem to wear even all the way around, so that might. Um, might be a problem but as long as we get somewhere near in the middle should be right they're not made that accurate anyway i don't think so yeah please with that So I've got that set up on there, that's how I'm going to have my bearings <coughs> and then my line bar mounted on there. So I've set a dial gauge up on there just to see if I could get an idea of how true it is running. But it's not running very true. It's, even in that short little bit there, it's going to be too hard to get an idea. So what I'm going to do, <coughs> especially when that's running on where it's been welded, it, it could have pulled this out of shape. which. It sort of doesn't like for just from just from there to there. Look how much it moves just in that little bit. So that can't be the shaft that's out. That must be. It must be this that's either not worn consistent or pulled because of the weld. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit the whole thing on my bench on some bearings. So run run some bearings on here so I can spin the whole thing and then get an idea. I can see whether the shaft's going up and down. So I've got that sat on there now. I've got a few safety precautions in as well. I've got some bits of box section welded on to the bench. So for some reason it did happen to fall off the, the rollers. It won't roll off the bench. And same with that side. I might put some blocks underneath it as well so it doesn't drop down, but yeah, that rolls on there now. So that'll make it easier as well for when I, when I build the welds back up. So we're doing the bad end first now. We'll, I did have it clamped on the other end, but Rather than turn the whole thing round, I've just put it on this way. So we'll get me clamp and bar set back up again, and then we can see how true it's going to run. So a dial gauge is probably far too accurate for this job. It doesn't need to be as accurate, but I'll just show you now. And it's all running on bearings at both ends. And look how much the dial gauge moves. So 
That just shows you how inconsistent they are. So what I'm going to do is just set up two set points. So there's that clamped onto there, that clamped onto there. And as long as I can get that distance, something similar as it's going round all the way, that'll be accurate enough. There's no point. It doesn't need to be 100% truly accurate because it's not a machined part. You know, it's made up part of bits, so it wouldn't have been true when it was used. So as long as I can get that something like, especially over that distance there, will uh, not exaggerate because it's only a little start start it's only a little short stub shaft so yeah as long as I can get that something right something like within a couple of mil we should be good So I think I've got it as near as I'm going to get it. So I've got the, it seems like the gap is equal wherever you turn it. It does go up and down, but I think the bar is, is parallel now. So I'll make that do. I'll slide my bearings on and then I think I'll maybe have to make some longer stands. I need to make some longer stands now, so I'm going to use this 35mm round bar and then drill in to either end and tap it with an M16 bolt.
So I've got this tool set up in here now, and I've just run it, I've just moved it onto that good bit and run it around there. And it's touching most of the way around. It's just a little bit at the bottom where it doesn't quite touch. But I think that, that's going to be near enough. And then I've got the tool touching on the end, well, not quite touching on the end. Can't get, me, can't get my phone in close enough to see, but the gap is pretty consistent all the way around. So I'll just have to set my tool up properly. I've just got it in at the moment just to see what I'm like. Put my bar, put my line bar on, and then we'll cut. Maybe we won't cut it all off, but we'll cut a lot of that off so we have a thickness of weld at this end. And then I'll weld it and then machine it back down again. I think we're good for a go then, we're all set up. So I think I'll just do one pass with this. I'll well, see what one pass looks like. I won't take it all the way down at this end, but there's enough there. I can just clean that up with a grinder. So yeah, see how that goes. Right, so it's just a bit chattery, it's not rigid enough, so I think I'm going to weld these bits from here onto there on each leg. That might hopefully make a difference. Right, so we've done one cut. I don't think there's any need to go further back than that because that's just where that collar goes. Plus, my tool, my like, tool stand's not long enough to reach all the way to the back and it's going to catch on there as well. So I think we'll do, make that do for depth. I might do another cut just to take a bit more off. Um, and then there's a bit more thickness of weld when I machine it down again.
But uh, that's the second cut done, that'll do now. I can clean the rest of that up with the grinder. It's terrible cut quality. I think his tool is too high when you look at where the centre of the, the bar is, maybe about there, and the centre of the and the height of the tool. So I think that tool height is too high. So I think it is maybe the tool that's not rigid enough why it's not cutting very nice because I can do that and I can physically see it moving a little bit. So maybe I have to take finer cuts with it. I was doing like one mil depth of cut first time. But anyway, we'll take this off, take the line bar itself off, leave all this bearing on and then just run some weld on it, build it up. Right, so I've been around it all once with weld. It's just, it is tapered still. So this end is not quite big enough. So from there to there needs a bit more weld. That end's all right. So I'll just put some short runs around there and then maybe one run all the way around the end just to square the end up. Then we should be good. So I've got all that built up now, that second half and then I run around the end. I think I might just give it a clean up with the grinder to get rid of that step blend it in a bit so it's because this is built up a bit higher than that end now Right, so I've got that ground down to a more consistent size, so there should be less to cut off with the line bar now, so I'll get it mounted back on. So I've done one cut on there and then I changed insert and then did a little bit of another cut. I'm not happy at all with how it's cutting, you can see how bad it is. So I've put the tool holder, clamped onto another bit of bar and you can see the tip of the tool is above centre line and you can see it's not, it's not cutting on the actual cutting edge, it's sort of just scraping. You can see there that's a Better shows you 
that's set on 20 mil, which is half of the diameter. And you can see how high that tool is. So I was thinking I could just alter that. I was thinking I could take a bit off the bottom and add a bit on the top, but then the bolt won't fit through the slot. So I'll have to make a new one of these. Well, I've just made a new tool holder with the tool offset now. So hopefully that should go better than that one. So we'll set up again and we'll see how we go now. Right, so I've got one more cut to do. It's not cutting too badly now, it's still not very good. I think the problem is it's not rigid enough. This slot is not rigid enough. I had that bearing too far away really, but if I had it any closer, I wouldn't have been able to get me my clamp out that I had on here. So yeah, you can just, you can see it moving a little bit. So I think that's the issue. Anyway, we'll take one more real light cut off and then we should be down to size. So I think we should be good at that. It measures 59.98. So that should be bang on. A little bit over. I think I'll make that do. If it does need a little bit more, I can always give it a bit of a polish with Emmy tape. Yes, yeah, so I think I'll. So I can take that off anyway, and then see whether the bearing's going to fit. It should do it that. That last cut is nice. Nice cut call. There's a few little bits where I've not had enough weld, but it's not going to affect it.
So it is a nice tight fit, is that bearing? I've, well, maybe a little bit too tight. I've got it a little bit so far on and got it stuck. I can't get it back off now. So I'll take all this lot off. And then I'll give it a bit of a polish up with some memory tape and then that should do that. So yeah, I'll take all this off now. Right, so that's that one done. It's not quite perfect. There's a few little bits where I haven't had enough weld, and I was, I wanted to put a bev, uh, a chamfer on, on the edge, on the end of the shaft with with that, but I don't think it'd have been rigid enough. I think it'd have just chatted. So I just ground it flat and then just went around it the ground. There's a few little low spots, but that shouldn't affect it. So the bearing fits on nice. Now it's nice and tight. That's that collar on. Um, I had to go around that last bit just to buff it off for the grinder because I couldn't reach in far enough for the tool before it was catching it was catching on there so yeah that's that end done so it's not a perfect job but it's a hell of a lot better than it was when it came back up to 60 mil now this end was down to I think it was 54 mil That's bearing on. It's quite tight. It's you'd have to you have to put a bar in it to to get it to come back off again. So that's nice and tight. So unfortunately, I don't have time this week to do the other end. Uh, this was the worst end. The other end is not as bad. This end is not as bad. I've just run out of time with the electric going off and whatnot, and other jobs coming in. It's only a four-day week as well for me this week. So yeah, I just haven't got time to do the other end. You get the idea anyway, it's just repeat the process on the other end. Yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.